Many have traveled to Egypt in search of a miracle. Many Christians today say they see fewer miracles, but we have more recorded miracles today than you probably know in the Coptic Church. Today, we celebrate the golden jubilee of our silent patriarch, Pope Kyrillus VI. I pray that today you may see beyond his icon on the wall. He was a man and a saint who was of great spiritual stature, who was immersed in the monastic life steps and a life of unceasing prayer. Pope Kyrillus was canonized as a saint 42 years after his departure. I begin his story in a very mournful period, which might have brought the Coptic Church to its knees. The church before Pope Kyrillus VI was broken, weeping, and profusely bleeding. Just 12 years later, Pope Kyrillus stood at the head of a nearly impossible spiritual revolution. It began in a cave deep in the desert and continued in a small house in Old Cairo and ended in the transformation of an entire church. I am utterly convinced that no one, not even his closest disciples, knew anything of Pope Kyrillus's inner life. I mean, how well could you know a virtually silent man? Even those closest to him insist that they do not know him well. He lived quietly and was consumed by prayer and liturgy, 12,000 liturgies to be exact. He sought refuge and consolation in only one place, the Eucharistic altar. It is said that his silence was known to God only. Azar was not born a saint. It was the path he chose. Not in the sense that one can seriously, consistently elect to be a saint. Rather, in the sense that he yearned absolutely for a solidary life with God. To say this desire was met with disapproval would be an understatement. His family was devastated. Azar Yusuf Atta was born in the heat of Demonor. He was a pious deacon of exemplary behavior, excellent voice and outstanding penmanship. He scribed many Coptic and Arabic books in fine calligraphy, and he diligently observed church rites. His work and success as a general manager for a shipping company reflected his love of mathematics. Esther, his mother, raised Azar in the fear of God. He had the whole Gospel of John memorized from a very young age. It was his mother, Esther, who introduced Azar to the tradition of the patron saint. For reasons unclear, Azar was fascinated by Saint Mina the Wonder Worker. Within a brief period, this saint became his patron saint and his living and tangible friend. Whether it was through Pope Carolo's miraculous healings, his concern for constructing a monastery for the saint, or through his numerous pleadings for intercession. Saint Mina was present in Azar's life from a very young age, as early as five years old. When his family would pilgrim to Ibiara, which was a five and a half hours walk away, in order to celebrate the saint's birthday in a Coptic church. Azar's father was a church deacon. When Azar had finished high school, he got a job for a shipping company in Alexandra, which he later resigned from to enter the monastery and become a monk. And he was ordained Father Mina after his patron saint. His love for God was so intense that he desired a life of solitude at the young age of 30, but the other monks refused his request. After years of dedication at various monasteries, he moved into a deserted windmill in Cairo's outskirts. Here he spent his time praying and contemplating his love for his savior. He was tempted by Satan, attacked by robbers, beaten badly, and walked 15 miles to the nearest hospital. Later, he was ordained as Pope of Alexandra in 1959 and abolished the barrier between himself and his congregation. Today, we remember the departure of the great Pope Carolus. He sat on the throne of St. Mark for 12 years. He was a holy man who lived a life of prayer and fasting. He had many other gifts besides performing miracles and wonders. His gifts included knowledge about people's pasts, and his greatest gift of all was leading by example. 